Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. How do you deal with an overly friendly neighbor who asks too many questions about your life when you happen to be outdoors at the same time? If you're not very open to chat, just keep things polite yet quick. It's nice to have a good relationship with your neighbors. If they do delve into personal questions, just say that's a bit personal, I'd rather not talk about that. Most important thing is to be polite. Don't be an asshole, or act standoffish when it's not necessary. Honestly, just use some common sense. Don't be a redditor, is all I'm saying. Don't be a redditor. I've repeatedly seen people on Ask Reddit say that they hate small talk and prefer to jump right into weird ask of those with people they don't know. I'm sure it works sometimes but sometimes I feel like the average Redditor has never been outside. The average Redditor is also not an average person. People seem to forget but this site has a pretty strongly defined primary demographic. It's mostly young, college-ish, male, nerdy forward slash geeky, and very liberal leaning. This place is a treasure trove of information and news on a wide variety of topics but so, so often the best advice gets downvoted to oblivion, or simply drowned out, if it doesn't appeal strongly to the demographic I just described. Hey man. Nice lawn. What do you use on that? It's personal. Well. The responses. Some good soon are clearly trying to be funny, but some are disturbing. Look, it is important to be on good, if not, friendly terms with your neighbors. You will have them in your life for a long time whether you like it or not. The responses that recommend short, vague answers where you follow up with questions of your own are the best. You may very well discover a new friend or you may both realize you don't click and you will naturally not take it any further. But you will be left with a neighbor that is at least on good terms. Remember they may be the person to notice you being robbed when you are not home, or notice the smoke from a fire first, or be accepting of the noise from a large party you decide to throw. There could be a lot of reasons they are talkative and not all of them are them just being nosy or a dick. They could be genuinely interested, lonely, had a bad neighbor in that house previously, etc to name a few. Edit. Well. This really blew up. Thank you for all the awards, gold and silver. That's never happened to me. I've tried to read all the comments and clearly the whole concept of community, neighbor, friendship, loneliness, etc. has struck a nerve. I hope that Op finds something useful and relevant to his situation. Seriously. The answers that recommend angry confrontations or talk of bodily functions are just ridiculous, and probably from 14-year-olds who have never actually had to navigate relationships with people in the wild. Having your neighbor on good terms is really wonderful, if not crucial. They will be at hand to borrow an egg or help you in an emergency. Hell, my neighbor called me to come sit with her as her husband died. All her family was far away and she needed someone who could come over in 30 seconds to hold her hand and be with her as he took his final breaths. That's what neighbors do, there's no sense in alienating people. It's very important these people as you said could have never been homeowners. I would give anything for an overly friendly neighbor at this point. I have spent 20 years trying to find one that at the very least fucking waves. I've always just casually said, hey, that's kind of personal. When said with a smile, it usually works. Edit forward slash notes. Thanks for the awards. Some people have pointed out that the kind of isn't necessary and in a sense, they're right. It's just how my speech usually sounds, and I find that the kind of is easier to say as a non-confrontational person. Turns out the friendly yet honest approach works very well for many situations. Are you supposed to overreact massively and then post on our forward slash omit he asshole? I live in an extremely religious community, Mormons, so this happens all the time. I used to try to be vague and give hints but the best technique I have found is this one. I am kind of a private person and then I compliment them on something I have noticed. Nice grass or hey thanks for checking on me, I know it comes from a good place. Oh Mormons, you gotta love them. I live in Utah, so I can relate. Difference is that once they found out we weren't Mormon, we pretty much turned invisible. Edit, just felt like I should add a bit more since this comment is gaining traction. Utah is kind of a strange place, and Utah Mormons are not like other Mormons. Everything in the whole state was built and run by Mormons, the whole state has this sense of community. Everything is connected. Outsiders are not unwelcome, they are just outsiders. It's hard to put it to words, but it's not hostile. 
it's just that once they figured out you are not part of this massive interconnected group, then they move on. Someone else mentioned people coming around to ask about wards and it is spot on. I also want to add that my parents' neighbors are very friendly and have always gotten along with them. Edit 2, just wanna give a shout out to all y'all uters in here, and a very big shout out to any of y'all from Ogden. Utah is silly, but it's home. People coming around to ask about wards. Wards. Welp, at the moment I only have that horseshoe up, and the rosemary by the garden gate, but I have dream catchers on order and a witch coming around next week too. Wait where are you going? You ever been in a storm, Wally? Not a thunderstorm but a storm of fists, raining down on your head. Pummeling you in the chest until you think your heart is gonna stop. You ever been in a storm like that, Wally? Look honestly I have very poor social awareness and no filter at all so they would probably hear about how my chronic illnesses have resulted in constipation so bad that I have to be on laxatives for 6 months to restart my bowels and the consequences that all of this has on my sex life. I fully accept that I am the reason that I have very few friends. When openness and honesty push people away, they simply are it a part of your flock. Okay but we also happen to be outdoors and I'm not too fond of having a public conversation about how you had logs backed up till July and you can't sex over it. You should move to Germany. This is totally normal there. If you ask someone how are you, they will tell you, medically, how they are. Took me a bit to get used to when I lived there. The flip side, is that the average German can't understand why you would ask someone how they are without expecting an answer. In North America we say how are you when we mean hi. Germans don't do that. I really liked living there. German here. Did you only talk to elderly rural people? In a work setting when being asked why jets? You have only like three valid replies Motagib. Gut, selbst. Gut is optional, and mus. In private you might extend that to manlet. Once you reach the age of 60 you are allowed to give a 15 to 20 minimum detailed answer about what you and all your relatives have been up to the last 5 years. I had an old neighbor like this once. It was back when I lived in a small conservative town in the US Midwest, still pretty freshly married and also freshly out my own with my wife. Anyway, my wife and I would always be sitting on the front porch of the place we lived, upper back slash lower style of duplex, we both worked a lot. Seeing as how we were working minimum wage jobs at the time we had to work a lot so we could pay bills, and eat, and put some money back. So the little time we had to relax and unwind together was pretty precious to us, still is tbh. So a few months pass of us living at this place and one day this very tall, very bald, black man just walked up onto the porch while we're sitting there relaxing. We've had a pretty good amount of sketchy people see us on the porch and either ask us to bum smokes, or if they can have some loose change, or if we know where to get any good drugs. I only mention his race because this is very conservative town in the pretty rural Midwest. We kinda look at each other and him as he's walking up, and say hi how are you? Not knowing what what to expect. He replies, hi i how y'all doing tonight? My name is Thomas but y'all can just call me T. I just wanted to stop by and introduce myself, I live in that house right over there, holds his arm up and flips his hand down to point at a nearby house very effeminately, and I just wanted to let come meet the neighbors, and let y'all know if you need anything ever. Just let me know. Welcome to the Aghbohuud. Us, oh hey thanks for introducing yourself man. My name is Atlas underscore is underscore my underscore son and this is my wife Atlas underscore is underscore also underscore my underscore son. That's very cool of you to walk over here and do that, we've only met our upstairs neighbor so far, and that's because I work with him and we have some beers with him occasionally. Think the neighborhood is nice so far, etc etc, small talk. His response to this, to me, was, oh 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 oh, you mind if I come and smoke a cigarette with y'all and talk for a second? I'll fill y'all in on all the dirty details of the neighborhood. Nothing too bad really sorry, it's not dirty, but I'll just tell y'all a little about the other neighbors. Being too polite to say no so far at this point, yeah sure, come on up and have a seat wherever you'd like. So he grabs a chair beside me and sits down. Looking at my wife, so is you two really married? Us, holding hands and wearing our wedding bands, yeah, working on our first year pretty soon. Thomas, still looking at my wife, mmph girl you are one lucky lady to be married to a man that looks as good as this.
I'm not gay or anything but girl if you didn't say you was married just now I'd be trying to get him to drink some beers with right now. Now looking at me, bashfully, he he he. Anyway, I'd say anywhere from once a week to once every few months, Thomas would randomly see us sitting on the porch and come up and make vague flirtatious remarks to me, and tell us how wonderful we were and how happy he was that we were neighbors. He eventually came out to us officially, lol, and was so happy that we were still accepting of him even though he was a sinner he cried and told us we were the biggest blessing he ever had in his life. Many many times he was annoying, and I backslash we just wanted to sit on our porch alone and enjoy the peace and quiet. But as a gay black man, in a small mainly white, very conservative, town, he needed our support more than we needed the peace and quiet those nights. And oddly enough, even though he wasn't an incredibly bright man in a lot of regards, he always seemed to say something that was incredibly insightful and thoughtful to what was going on with us either at work, or with distant relatives or something that there is literally no possible way of him knowing about us, and he always said in about himself. He drank too much and smoked too much weed, but he was always just looking to escape the pain of literally everyone being you and accepting of who he was as a person, and him just wanting to be liked. Anyway, there isn't a happy ending or a sad one. My wife and I moved back out west to be near family and finish school after we had our daughter, and that was the last I heard from Thomas. We exchanged phone numbers so that we could stay in touch, but he never contacted me and the two times I tried to contact him he was out of minutes or had maybe gotten a new phone number. He needed our support more than we needed the peace and quiet those nights. May karma reward you. That was a really nice and sobering story of the fragile relationships that we have over the years with people who come and go in our lives. It reminded me of long summer nights drinking with my downstairs neighbors in an old apartment complex. Luke, a young electrician apprentice lived in Hash 2. Then we had Nathaniel who was a huge nerd forward slash geek in Hash 6. We were in Hash 4 and there was Gabriel, an African man from Cameroon who lived in Hash 1. We all had spent two summers together fairly tight-knit as far as neighbors go. We spent many nights together poking fun at the crazy lady who lived in Hash 5 and just enjoying each other's company. It was always interesting stories about Cameroon and the cultural differences between there and America. Eventually, as sure as the sun sets in the west, we each individually moved on to new locations and new chapters in our lives. None of us stayed in touch, but I think of them often and wonder what they are up to. And those kinds of relationships can sometimes be the best. Fleeting connections with folks who are only available to us by proximity. Thanks for sharing man, it made me smile and remember those guys. It's been six years now since I've seen them.